talk to us about TACO section and MIFM SICS as a CV. Over to you, Ravinder sir, for your talk. Yeah, good evening and good morning to everybody. Uh, thanks to uh, all the organizations who have enabled this. Uh, can, can you see my video, doctor? Uh, yes, sir, your video is just played, yes, visible. Yes, so SICS is a, a way to go and uh, we have been doing this for many decades now. And I would like to show a couple of videos which show us one type of SICS that's FACO section. Uh, you can so see it. Uh, tell me. Yeah, it is perfectly all right. Uh, fine, fine, fine. Okay. This is done under topical anesthesia. I'm sitting on the temporal aspect of the eye. Sometimes I, I move my in incisions a little superior or inferior depending upon the steep axis. I've entered from the anterior sclera across limbus and peripheral cornea into the anterior chamber and uh, completed the rexis uh, uh, in a closed chamber. I'm bisecting the nucleus using two instruments, a sustainer and a uh, cystitome itself, rotated the nucleus into the anterior chamber. The entire surgery, as you can see, is done under very low pressure. There is no positive pressure at all during the surgery, during the entire surgery. So that helps us in maintaining the, uh, the homeostasis inside the eye throughout the procedure. The cortex is being aspirated now, and the sub-incisional cortex can be aspirated using the uh, J-shaped candelas, which come in a pair, the right and left, and the lens can be injected into the eye, into the capsular bag. So there are various uh, special situations where this kind of technique will be of great use. I'll showcase a couple of techniques. They're all fast-forwarded videos. This is a very, uh, as you can see, very chronic, long-standing glaucoma with severe loss of visual field. We certainly would not like to increase the pressure during surgery. People doesn't dilate beyond this. The uh, pseudo exfoliation is extreme. Chamber is very shallow, and uh, zonules, uh, you're sure, will be very weak. I've done erexis, the size of which is permitted by the pupil. I've gone little under pupil. The fag end, I've gone under the iris. Uh, so that I have a little larger. I do a good one single point or two point hydrodissection, topical anesthesia again, and prolapse the nucleus into the anterior chamber. Note that zonules are not involved in the procedure at all. If I'm doing the procedure intra back like, lower, like, like what I did last time, I would be pulling and pushing the zonules and they could be a rexis, they could be a loss of rexis or loss of capsular bag integrity. So I brought it into the anterior chamber and bisecting the nucleus with the cystitome, which is 25 gauge, there is a huge risk for the endothelium, so you have to continuously inject HPMC using that 25 gauge candela, which separates the endothelium from the nucleus. So nucleus endothelium would remain pristine, as you can see on the first post-op day and on endothelial counts. This is a six millimeter tunnel, so I can easily, without folding the lens, I can put the lens inside the capsular bag. Excellent results. There's no need for hooks. There's no need for capsular retaining. I'm sealing the conjunctiva tenons using fibrin glue at the end of surgery. Eyes kept open. That's on day one. Uh, you, you can manage many of these complex cases by this technique. The fluidics is very low, as you can see here. This is a case of post-injury. The, the lens itself is tumulus. There is more than one-fourth quadrant, uh, uh, as you can see here, as you can see here. From, from say five o'clock till 10 o'clock, I'm sitting on the temporal side. There is a dehiscence which was diagnosed preoperatively. In spite of it, I could go and get a good rexis. I start from the area where it is dehiscent. There is a sinicade which I'm going to release now. Uh, I'll go a little fast forward. That's the release of sinicade. I do a good single point or two point hydrodissection. You watch the uh, zonilla dehiscence now as they rotate, the, you can see the zonilla rotate dehiscence here. Uh, it doesn't matter because there's a low pressure, as you can see, the whole thing is detached now. So I'm not adding on to the dehiscence by this very gentle technique, bisecting the nucleus, a little fast forward. And uh, what I'm trying to impress here is the technique is so gentle, the infusion is under control, the aspiration is under control, the pressure is zero to 10 millimeters of mercury flow rate is very slow the entire surgery needs probably about 20 milliliter of 
fluid and you put the lens inside. I don't need a CTR. The lens itself will support the capsular bag. That's a multifocal lens which the patient wanted. The other eye has a multifocal. It's a very complex situation, bilateral uh, spherophakia with uh, very shallow chambers. We have done a peripheral allectomy. There are hardly any space in the anterior chamber. The entire uh, zonules are uh, detached. I'm going to prepare myself for putting iris claw lens in this patient. I'm holding the uh, lens. I'm making, it's impossible to perforate it unless I am holding it like what I'm holding with a MVR blade. And I made two punches there opposite to each other, counterbalancing one another. I'm holding the capsular bag so that I can study the nucleus. I'm doing a rexis. As you see now, rexis, I could complete rexis. And then I, being a young person, the patient must be around 15, 18 or 20 years, I've done a tropical anesthesia. I've done multiple hydrodissections. Otherwise, I'll do only a hydrodelineation. I could aspirate the entire nucleus. Capsular bag appeared to be quite stable. I'm not entering into the posterior uh, vitreous cavity. I'm retaining the capsular bag. It is going to opacify later, but I can salvage it using a YAG laser. It's a very gentle surgery. Fluidics is very low. I'm not pushing the capsular bag backwards. Entire cortex needs to be removed. And then I'm putting an iris claw lens, retaining the post capsular bag. Iris claw is rotated in the axis of the incisions that are made. It goes behind the iris and enclave it using a 27 gauge cannula on either side. So that's going to be the end of surgery. What I've done is I have not uh, gone into the vitreous cavity. I have not disturbed the hyaluronic phase. So the posterior segment complications are going to be least in this technique. If the capsule is not opacified uh, even now, we, if it in case opacifies, it can always remove it by this thing. Vitrectomy and cataract are often done together. This is a very, very ballooning type of a cataract, Morgagnian type. And uh, I'll go a little fast forward so that I can complete my videos. I could do a rexis comfortably. The surgeon has already prepared for the vitrectomy patient has a gross posterior segment, posterior segment disease, which needs vitrectomy. B scan shows multiple diseases. Nucleus rotated into the anterior chamber, bisected and brought into the outside by the same technique which protects endothelium. So uh, implant a lens. There's another case. If you manage the large tunnels like this, it's very comfortable to remove this dislocated capsular bag with the lens inside. Larger tunnel, which is more than six millimeters, so you'll have to handle taking out the nucleus, taking out the lens, as well as putting the scleral claw, so the iris claw lens. You have a choice of putting a scleral fixation, but I would rather retain the hyaloidal phase in this patient remove the uh, dislocated nucleus. The incision is six millimeters. It's extremely easy without disturbing the hyaloidal phase. You can catch hold of it, take it out of the eye. Entire complex came out, protect the hyaloidal phase and implant the iris claw lens, which you have seen already. I'll go fast forward. That's the other uh, claw being implanted. Posterior subcapsular cataract and posterior polar cataracts are always considered as challenging, but in this technique of low fluidics, it's extremely easy to do it. That's a case of posterior subcapsular uh, sub cataract, but looks like posterior capsular. I did a good rexis. And usually people uh, do not do a hydrodissection, but in this technique of low pressure technique, keeping the eye pressures very low, you can do a hydrodissection which dissects capsule, as you can see, you can see there, the posterior sub cap, subcapsular cataract got separated from the posterior capsule. There is no dehiscence there. It looks as though there is a dehiscence, but there is absolutely no dehiscence. It got separated by hydrodissection. The entire posterior capsule is separated from the, the, uh, from the uh, cortex. So that makes things easier. It's a soft nucleus. I still maintain the integrity of nucleus and epinucleus, rotate it, prolapse into the anterior chamber, just like any other thing. If you separate epinucleus and nucleus, 
rotation will be very difficult. So now there is no bowing backwards of the posterior capsule that protects the capsule from tearing. I've extracted the nucleus. You can see that the posterior capsule is open there. If you have a very high positive pressure at this point of time, it's going to push it backwards. And if it is weaker, it'll, it'll tear off. So in this technique, you can do a comfortable hydrodissection to separate the posterior cortex from the capsule, by which you can avoid. The patient wanted a multifocal, the patient has a multifocal in the eye. So there are a couple of more challenging situations. I would uh, finish it within my time. This is a case uh, where you have to make a 9 millimeter or 9.5 millimeter tunnel, sclerocorneal tunnel. I opened the conjunctiva tenons. The patient is albinotic. I've removed the uh, cortex. The patient has uh, nystagmus and very poor vision because of low contrast. Nothing helps him. Topical anesthesia. You can put a very large custom-made lens of very high power. This power is around 35 adapters and patient was extremely happy postoperatively because the, uh, that needs a single suture and I'm closing the conjunctiva with Baxter glue. So excellent vision, patient is so happy, has never seen the world with that clarity. This is a case uh, of uh, uh, non-ophthalmus, uh, young patient, very young, 25 year old patient and hardly there is any space in the eye. Corneal diameter is around 9 or 9.5 millimeters. And the same technique, larger incision, you can aspirate the cortex out of the eye, and you can put a lens of power 60 diopter, 60. There is no need to piggy bank the lenses. One single lens, custom designed lens of PMMA can go through this lens in the capsular bag. Again, the patient had series of patients had, that's a 60 adapter lens as you can see here, goes in the capsular bag, wonderful vision the patient has, post-operative power is minus one adapter and she's working on system uh, without any glasses. So with that, I would like to come to the end of my video. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity.